you talk about wanting to get full transparency from a distributor, but how does someone do that due diligence if a lot of people are really good at you know hiding numbers and and being evasive? How do you how do you take ownership of that if if you're getting someone that's giving you the runaround because we've heard that from other filmmakers where yeah. they've tried to contact them and people can keep very creative books they can so th the way you do that is you do it before you sign the paperwork so that's the key so it's not after you sign the paperwork once you sign the paperwork and you give them the rights to your film or let me put you let me put it to this way once you give them a digibeta with a film on it and you don't have anything in writing that allows you to visit their office look at their numbers do all these things then it's it's out of your hands basically so when you're dealing with a distribution company it when I mean fully transparent I, I think they should have a physical office that's accessible to you not some you know somebody based in, in Texas or Kentucky and who has like a branch office in Los Angeles that's only open during the AFM that that might be a warning to you. So just you know, just to, to for you know filmmakers to know. So you want to have a concrete office that that has an open door policy that you can visit. Um, you want to know where your film is going. And one of the ways to ensure that is don't give them the film. Don't give them the film. Period. You hang on to it, and and you say okay, you guys are gonna get whatever 30 percent 40 percent or 60 percent of the profit whatever but i hang i hang on to the media so when you get an order you tell me about the order and i'll supply it and that supposed like 99 cents per cd charge that you want to charge me i'll eat that I'll, I'll make the cd for you i'll do the dvd for you no no problems keep your film with you and 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 i and i stress that too with like screeners a lot of people are very flippant or ambivalent about screeners yeah send me a screener send me a screener don't send people screeners unless it's you know you're, you you feel they're legit and you feel that they're there's somebody that you're actually going to work with because even at the afm a lot of people are like you didn't bring a screener it's like no i didn't bring a screener are you going to buy the film no no i just want to look at it well when you want to buy it or if you really think about you know if you really want to you know distribute it because you're already asking me, like, what's, who's the talent and who shot the film? Who's the director? I don't know this person. I don't know X, Y, Z. So once that film goes out of your hand, then, you know, it's, it's pretty much over. They can do pretty much whatever they want unless you are fortunate enough to have Lionsgate buy your film, which, you know, it, which is wonderful if that ever happens. But um, so keep the technology with you. Keep your, keep your media with you. That's key. And if somebody wants to distribute for you, let them distribute for you but you keep the goods and and it really shouldn't make a difference because like if i'm a distribution company and i say to uh redbox that okay redbox um i'm going to give you 1000 units and you're going to give me uh 4000 dollars for it and then you can tell your your film guy like hey guys we're getting a 4000 dollar check from redbox here's your 2000 here's our 2000 um, can you get them 4,000 units of the film by the 31st of January? No problems. We'll, we'll send it to Redbox right now. So I think that's a better way to work. Um, I think the industry is, is you have a lot of people who, um, and, uh, you know, I, this is, once again, this is a learning process, but I, I feel the, the industry here, and even, even more so abroad, you have a lot of people who are gainfully employed who are just basically taking advantage of people and and that's that's wrong and because these people are artists you know th these people are people that put their life their hopes their dreams into making a film and uh they're and they get taken advantage of because to them you know you're looking for that one person who believes in your film and you, and you might find a smooth talking distributor i love your film i'm going to make it happen but you know you know don't don't give up you know keep you know protect your film and protect your media and, and do it in a, in, a, in a smart way how do you feel about online screeners? Someone gives you a, a password protected link to something, but they could still rip it and Yeah, they could. Mm -hmm. So still it's so so yeah. have it on a laptop. Yeah. Keep ultimate control of it. Exactly. You can show people. Exactly. That's what we did. We took the laptop with us to the AFM and we could show them the reels and the everything right there. The the trailer should be online, you know, the trailer and a couple of reels so people get the gist of the film. 
but but the whole film you know you you, you really should keep that to yourself i feel and then what about hiring an attorney to look over the contract? It seems like a lot of people's, oh, I had my friend's dad look at it and it looked fine. Do you advise someone spending whatever it is, $400, $500 an hour to review someone's contract? Because I think that's probably a good idea. I think if, it, if, if you have one distributor who's going to handle your entire project for the next, um, let's say the contract is for two to three years, or if it's a five-year contract, that's renewing. I mean, spending like, you know, four or five hundred bucks or even like, you know, up to a thousand dollars for that peace of mind for the next five years is is well worth it. You know, just skip your daily Starbucks for a year. You know, you can do it. I mean, it, it's important. It's peace of mind. And then you can move on to your next project without having to ever worry about, you know, the last thing you want to do is give your film to a distributor and then not be able to contact him. Like, hey, what's going on? What's going on with my film? And so you just don't want to put yourself in that situation. So to sum it up, it sounds like all of the work that you have to do to protect your um, media is done beforehand, and it's not done after. And once it's done after, it's it's out of your hands. It's out of your hands, yeah. I mean, you, you could get lucky and get a legitimate distributor, but my impression is there, there are not very many of them around. There, there just aren't. You know, it's just a, it's a shady market out there.